Hello everyone, my name is Bo Alexander and I'm so glad that you're here. In today's video, I want to show you some of my favorite home decor pieces that I've collected over the past few months from non-conventional outlets like Facebook Marketplace, eBay, and Etsy. You know I love me a good home goods haul, but there are so many other incredible means of finding unique and eclectic home decor accents, and I want to shed some light on a few that I've utilized to source these incredible items. If you're new to my channel, be sure to subscribe down below. Let me know if you enjoy videos like this in the comments, and give me a like so that I know to do more videos like this in the future. Also, be sure to follow me over on Instagram at BotoxNow for more day-to-day -day posts and inspiration. Let's dive right in to these fabulous finds. First is this incredible Wassily or Model B3 styled chair. Believe it or not, the first rendition of this chair was created by the modernist architect Marcel Brewer. He was an apprentice at the Bauhaus workshop in Germany back in 1925, so it is nearly a century old design. Brewer was inspired by the frame of a bicycle and forever changed the course of furniture design when he fashioned this piece of bent tubular steel in the image of a club styled armchair. I have seen this chair in so many minimalist and mid century spaces and in photos on Instagram. I actually came across this piece myself while scrolling late one night on Facebook Marketplace. High quality reproductions of the chair that are identical to the original sell for around $2,900 online. The Marketplace seller who lives locally in the city over from me had this piece listed at $100. Can you believe it? I didn't even have it in me to negotiate the price it was so reasonable. The frame of this chair is made of a highly polished stainless steel with a chrome finish and silver welded joints. The seat and straps too are made of a premium top grain cowhide leather. I was drawn to this piece for its sleek and modern appeal. It's a unique unique and eclectic statement piece. It stands alone as a work of art and is surprisingly comfortable to sit in. The second is this black laminate plinth pedestal. I had been on the hunt for one of these for months to display the various works of art and busts that I have in my apartment. Depending on the size, color, and finish, these plinth pedestals can vary from $132 to upwards of $300 online. Now in my opinion, that's a steep price to pay for a pedestal that is used merely to display a bust or a work of art. In typical bow fashion, I happen to be scrolling Facebook Marketplace early one Saturday morning and happened to see this piece listed by a local seller for $20. You better believe that I messaged them in seconds and was on my way to scoop this piece up shortly after. The pedestal is actually made of wood and is finished in a black high gloss laminate. The base itself is 12 inches by 12 inches and stands at 36 inches in height and acts as the perfect display for the next piece that I'm about to show you, which happens to be this bust of David. This bust is a reproduction of the Michelangelo David sculpture from the early 1500s and is considered to be one of the most famous and recognizable in art history. He is rather large in scale and stands tall at two feet in height. Like the bust of Artemis or Diana that I showed you in last week's video, this David bust is made of solid alabaster and is pretty substantial in weight at nearly 15 pounds. My aunt actually purchased this piece for me as a surprise and dropped him off on my doorstep earlier in the year. Like the other pieces that I've shown in this video so far, he was a Facebook Marketplace find and I believe he cost around $45 or $50. I know she made quite the trek to go get him, but he completely completely sets the tone of my living room and commands the attention of all who enter my home. Another incredible piece that I've acquired is this beautiful Stargazer sculpture. She's an original Art Deco stylized female bust from Austin Productions by the artist David Fisher. This piece was handmade and signed by the artist himself in 1980, so she is about 40 years old and made of a stone-like plaster. She sits atop a black laminate covered particle board base that's actually quite similar to the pedestal that I showed you earlier in the video. She's in perfect condition and stands at just over a foot in height. I like that she can also be viewed from every direction and takes on a completely different look. My aunt actually purchased this piece for me for my birthday a few weeks back off eBay and had her shipped from Texas. I believe that she was being sold as part of an estate sale and at a reasonable price for about $90. The style was produced in various sizes and I've seen them range in price online from $175 to upwards of $500. The fifth piece that I want to talk to you about is this vintage Italian discus thrower statue by the sculptor Gina Ruggieri. This is a neoclassical style reproduction 
collection of the Discovolo marble statue by Myron. He is extremely detailed and beautifully made. This statue too is made of solid alabaster and stands at just over a foot in height. My aunt and I actually went on a morning drive to meet the seller of this piece this past weekend. And believe it or not, he was another Facebook marketplace find. I'm telling you guys, there are so many incredible pieces that you can find secondhand for extremely reasonable prices. He was only $40, which is much less than what they're being sold for online in this size. Again, you can find more affordable pieces online that are brand new in the $50 to $70 range, but they will be just a little bit smaller in scale and size. Now I know I showed you all two ornate Baroque styled mirrors that I upcycled in my last video, which I'll be sure to link above in the cards just in case you missed it. But this piece here was the first that I purchased off Facebook Marketplace a few months back. That actually started my love affair with these Baroque or Rococo styled mirrors. I actually happened to like this variation for the hand carved acanthus leaf detail. When I came across this listing, the seller did create a sense of urgency and said that the piece needed to be sold same day. They had it listed for around $50, I believe, and I negotiated the price down to $40. I spray painted the surround of this mirror to matte black using the same technique that I did in last week's video. I actually have it hung in my entryway and it's the perfect size for that space. Sound off in the comments below and let me know if you guys would like to see a video that details the secondhand apps that I use to source these pieces and all of the steps and precautions that I take to ensure a safe and smooth transaction. It would definitely be a more informative style video, so I would like to hear from you all directly as to whether or not you'd find that of interest. The next few items that I want to talk to you guys about were all purchased off of Etsy from the same seller, Betancourt Manor. They are a couple, Rick and Matthew Betancourt, who launched a design studio together in Toronto that I came across when looking for decor accents. What I absolutely love about these guys is their attention to detail. They source and curate very eclectic and exclusive pieces, and they ship to the US, which I appreciate. Each Wednesday, they post their new shop acquisitions on Instagram and their stories, which has been the driving force for me making these purchases. The first piece that I found was this vintage carved wooden female. With shipping, I only paid $30 for this find. According to their listing, she was an heirloom. And if I had to guess, I would say that she is carved from ebony, which is a black or brown colored hardwood and polished for a glossy effect. She is about eight inches in height. I was actually drawn to this style for her silhouette. I love the sleek design and thought she was an extremely unique decor accent to add to my collection. At the time, I didn't have any female buster figures, so I thought she would add a feminine element to my space. The second item that I purchased from them was the Circle of Hands vessel. This piece is made of cement and is rather weighty as a result. You could absolutely use this as a vase for fresh or dried florals. I would think even a flameless candle so as not to cause a potential fire hazard. There is a gold colored Piedmont hand vase out there in the market that has a similar aesthetic, but that piece will set you back around $170. I bought this piece back in April for around $50 with shipping and thought it was such a steal, and I've yet to come across anything else exactly like it. My most recent acquisitions, similar to the female figure, are these carved wooden hands. These too are likely made of ebony, and are fashioned in a Buddhist mudra hand position. I was drawn to the long and slender fingers. They are beautifully carved and appear to be of Indonesian craftsmanship. With shipping from Toronto, these were only $46, and are two of the more unique small decor accents that I've sourced. I'm sure that you could use these as a holder for jewelry and rings, but I just have them purely for decoration atop a stack of books on my coffee table. So that is it for this week's video, you guys. I hope that you continue to feel inspired while sourcing decor pieces that elevate your home in your own unique style. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell so that you can be notified first for upcoming posts and videos. And until next time, bye!